can I just say I'm so proud of First Unitarian? We may be damp in body, but we will not be damp in spirit. <laughs> and we are here in body and spirit, and we are treading lightly on the state capitol grounds. You may notice that nothing we have brought or set up is physically attached to this property. And I assure you that after we leave, there will be no trace that we were here. This is actually a legal requirement of the permit we got to be here to hold our event on this particular spot. And I have come to believe that this particular requirement of free usage but without attachment is a perfectly wonderful and appropriate metaphor for this event. Because at the risk of pointing out the obvious, we are a church, a community of faith called individually and as a community to something higher than partisan politics or the whims of any given electorate. But these grounds that we stand on represent the state of Colorado, an edifice of the government that creates the laws that govern all people. It is no accident, but rather the result of careful and thoughtful intention that churches and states are not supposed to be attached to one another. Amen. Amen. Churches and states must certainly live together, but not encumbered. They fulfill different roles, meet different needs, they tend to separate concerns. I don't know, frankly, or personally, if God had a hand in creating this particular system or not, but if so, it would be the clearest evidence of intelligent design that I have yet seen. <laughs> For it has everything to do with intelligence and with design. And that's why we are holding up our banner with our own hands and our own hearts, standing on our own two feet instead of attaching it to the state. We don't need the state to help us hold up our banner. We don't need the state to tell us what it means to be a people of faith. We don't need the state to tell us who we can or cannot administer our sacraments to, including the sacrament of marriage. That's not what the state is for. And that's why we're here. Because last year, the state crossed that line. They made it legal to discriminate in who can get married and who can't, but they can't make it right. Not now, not ever. I'll outline just a few of the reasons, the main reasons that Amendment 43 and anything like it are irreligious, uncivil, and immoral. It is irreligious because religion is for bringing together, for binding ourselves and our communities to the larger work of creation. You may want to know that this is the origin of the word religion. It speaks to the bond between human beings and God. Nothing could be clearer from reading the Gospels that, that, than that God is a strong believer in love. And anything contrary to this deeply reflective, deeply connective work is, in my opinion, something less than religious. An authentic religion, in my opinion, would never seek to discriminate or to deny the deeply sustaining love that good people share. It is uncivil because the very basis of civil society is the rule of law, which by definition must apply equally and without bias to all citizens. There is a reason that Lady Justice that you've often seen depicted carries a scale, a sword, and in modern times is almost always depicted with a blindfold on so that she can weigh the facts without prejudice or influence. The fact that marriage inequality is now constitutionally mandated, the fact that our friends Steve and Lori can get married while our friends Kate and Sheila and any number of other good and faithful people cannot, is a travesty of civil law and a direct undermining sabotage of justice. On this issue, I believe Lady Justice is keeping her blindfold on in order to hide her tears. It is immoral because it's unfair. It tells some people that their love is worthy and legitimate, and it tells other people that their love is unworthy and illegitimate. First Unitarian has something to say.
to the good people of Colorado who sponsored and voted for this discrimination. It is this. That's not up to you to define for our community. Thank you very much. Or as Reverend Robert Hardy's recently said, the human heart is a better judge of love than either the church or the state. Yeah, yeah. Who are you to tell my friends Kate and Sheila, my friends Lewis and Lauren, my friends Eddie and Glenn, my friends Deborah and Lorraine, that the love and commitment they share is less worthy and less legitimate than yours? That's not up to you to define for my community. At best, I believe you have, with good intentions, misplaced your authority around this idea that is both a religious and a civil matter. At worst, I'll be blunt, your politicians and so-called religious leaders have used this issue to drive a wedge into our nation, exploiting real human beings for their own personal and political gain. The first is perhaps understandable, the second is not in religious language that is known as a sin. Let me be clear where First Unitarian is coming from. We are people of faith, gathered together in religious community. We covenant with each other, with God, and with creation. We know that our time here is finite, and we ourselves imperfect. We know that the ways of life and death, creation and destruction, holiness and desecration are mysterious. We don't pretend to know with infallible certainty where we came from, where we're going, or what purpose, if any, is leading the universe towards its destiny. But we know a couple things, and we believe a couple more. We believe in families, we believe in justice, and we believe in love. We believe that if God has expectations of us, it is primarily that we seek to live our lives in the service of love and justice. We believe that if there is a religious, a religious calling for human beings, it is to be in covenant with each other and with creation and, and with creation for the betterment of all. God's work, our hands, as I read somewhere recently. We believe in marriage. We believe that mutually respectful, mutually sustaining, deeply loving and committed relationships among free people are good things worthy things, maybe even sacred and holy things. It is our experience that the great Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu had it right when he wrote, to love someone deeply gives you strength, being loved by someone gives you courage. We believe, and we believe God knows, that the world would be a better place if more people could know love, give strength, and create courage. Somebody say amen. Amen! And, as people of faith, we do not consider ourselves better than those who favor discrimination in marriage. We do not claim to be the beneficiaries of some special dispensation from God. We don't claim that our lives are morally superior or that those who do claim a special dispensation from God have any less inherent worth and dignity than we do. But we do say that we are called to stand on the side of love, even in the freezing rain. <laughs> we do say that our faith in the unity of creation, in the holy relatedness of all living things, and in the love of the divine is straightforward and it makes demands upon us. We do say that in a free and healthy society, the great gift of human love, whatever form it takes, should be nurtured and protected, not selectively excluded. We simply say and simply seek that the rights that apply to some should apply to all, with no exceptions, on God's green earth. Amen.